Content isn't everything. It's the only thing. Learn from the smartest minds in media as they discuss how businesses, brands, influencers, and media outlets are leveraging content to reach fans better than ever before. Presented by Jack Media. Vishal Reddy, thanks so much for joining us. This is always, it's always a fun time talking with you and you're the person in New York City who I believe I've actually known for the longest out of any of my contacts here. So I know a lot about your background in the arts and as a creator, but give the listeners at home a little bit of insight into your career thus far and how you came to be here. Um, well, like you said, I've, I've known you since I was uh, 15 years old. Babies in high school doing all sorts of dumb things. Um, still, still arguably well, doing some yeah, dumb things probably. off and on. Yeah. This makes sense. This makes sense. It tracks. Um, no, I'm, a, I'm from Tennessee originally and I am an actor, writer, producer, um, whatever, what, whatever you pay me to do, I'll probably be there. Um, yeah. And I moved to New York, um, uh, five, like about five, six years ago to start, performing and start creating my own uh, content and uh, have been doing that ever since. And the last like two years have sort of been very formative and very busy in that um, creative lane. Now, when you moved to New York, you talked about moving here to perform, but you do wear a lot of hats. Uh, you're a writer, director, producer, performer, singer, you name it. It seems like everyone has to be kind of that five tool player, mm -hmm. that, that five way threat these days. Yeah. Has that, was that something you expected when you moved here or did it kind of hit you like a ton of bricks? No, not at all. I genuinely thought I was going to be an actor. I thought that was going to be it. That's all I needed to do. I thought that I didn't have to have any other skills in this, uh, in this world. Um, and I thought it was just going to all happen. And, uh, <laughs> it, it, it hasn't, it has not. It's one of those things where I think we're now living in this cool time where because things are changing so much with entertainment, um, you can't just be one thing. You have to be able to have other skills. Um, and you also, people want that people that are hiring you, studio heads, networks, um, production companies, um, even like writer's rooms, they want people to be doing all sorts of things. Um, and I think we're also living in an interesting time where it's, we're all sort of, we're all over the place. And if we're not busy, um, we don't know what to do. And so we, we, we force ourselves to, you know, be adept and also, um, finding other hobbies and things that we can, you know, maybe make into, you know, a lucrative career in some way. Yeah. When the side hustle becomes the main gig. Yeah. We fall victim to that a lot in New York. Mm -hmm. I, they, I had a, like a mentor in college tell me that like the vacation is when you actually like get the gig and then, the, uh, the, the auditions and the writing and like taking meetings and all that stuff, like that is like the actual work. And so once you like get to the point where you're, you know, there and you're like living in the world and you're just kind of like getting paid to, you know, do what you really, really love that that's vacation for like a lot of artists and creatives. So, um, that's the goal. That's always kind of the goal. How have the last five years, five, six years been in terms of like the path has it been, mm. are there like a couple moments that stand out as like, Oh, that's when I, leveled up or was it just kind of like an accumulation of small things that kind of kept you on this, this path to where you are now? It was, it was, I think it, it was big moments. It was moments where I, um, I came to New York, I was performing for a little bit and, um, was booking work and was really happy with that. And, um, that's like the dream to come to New York city and then to like, w especially for me, I've wanted to do this. I've wanted to be an actress since I was like a kid. And so I was always like, in theater camps and singing lessons and playing piano and dance camps, all these different things and just trying to be as creative as I could. Um, and so to be able to like get hired to do that stuff and to like work with really fun people and then make friends with them was, it's like, the, it's a dream. Um, but then like, I think like two years in, I st it started becoming like, I gig a little bit and then I'd like go work at bars and I would work, I would have like three or four side hustles just to like pay my rent. And then, um, I would go gig for a little bit and then I would do the same thing again. And like, it just got to a point where I started realizing that just like the, and if you've heard me speak about this, I'm really passionate about it just because like the opportunities that are present out there, um, particularly for, um, South Asian performers like myself, um, are still few far in between. There've been a lot of strides that we've made. There's a lot of people that you see in our media that, um, represent, you know, my community in different ways. And that's wonderful. But, um, it all starts from like th the storytelling and it all starts from being 
behind scenes and getting more people there. And I started realizing that like nothing was going to change if, if I didn't collaborate with people and I didn't start, you know, writing my own material that I wanted to see. Um, but the big moment that really like kind of, (laughs) kind of messed me up was, uh, I was up for a lot of these big gigs like Broadway shows and TV shows. And, um, just sort of thought like, cool, cool. Like one of these is going to land. And they all, like, none of them landed. Oh, and I no. found out in the span of a very short period of time that, like, I did not book any of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was, it crushed me. Like, it was so devastating. And so I was like, well, what am I doing? And so, like, I quit. I quit for, like, a month. I was just like, nope, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to do this. Like, this is not it. Um, and then the more I thought about it, I was like, no, this is exactly what I needed to, like, to wake me up. And also like, I don't, for me, there's not another plan. I don't, I love creating and I love doing this and, um, I love working with people in this capacity. And so I was like, well, what am I going to do? Do I, I'm, I think I was like 26, 25. I was 25 at that point. Like I'm still, I'm still young. I still have energy. I might as well just try to like do something else and pivot. And so that's what I did. And I started writing and, Mm. um, shadowing on like sets and then working with friends who are producing stuff. And then like I would go on Instagram and I would literally in Twitter and DM people who, um, were content creators and be like, talk to me. Like, can we get coffee? Can we like just chat about like how you raised money, how you like, um, how you started writing? Where did you get this idea? Like, I was just so curious about that stuff because like they got their content to a certain level Mm -hmm. and we're just doing it. Um, regardless of if like they were monetizing it, they were just doing it and people were seeing it. And I was like, I gotta, I want to do that. And so that's, that was it. Cool. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about that because that's something where uh, we talk about level up moments and a lot of those have come for you from my perspective, at least Mm. working with you a bit, uh, producing some of the work that you, that has come from your mind and a few level up moments that I want to talk about later on in the in the broadcast are the premiere of your web series, uh, your acceptance into the, into the Tribeca Creative Program for 2019, which was a really cool thing. I'm curious to learn more about. But talk about this storytelling. And after this moment, when you realized that the storytelling was going to have to come from within, and mm. you collaborated with and reached out to writers and storytellers whose work you admired. When was that fundamental moment where you're like, I have the idea and here's what I want to create? Because ultimately you now have a web series, mm-hmm. Insomnia. So yeah. what got you to that point where that went from kind of an idea to something that you were very much putting in motion? Um, I, I think a big one was that my manager at the time, th- there's this thing in the acting business um, that's called typing. and I hate it. And we're not we're not talking just like nope plucking away at a keyboard. No 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 no. Typing is basically where, um, in my opinion, based off of what you look like and what you sound like, people are going to pigeonhole you into certain roles and certain things that you can do. I mean, that's why Kenny and I are on podcasts right now. And you're not seeing our faces, so yeah. <laughs> they have they have <laughs> they, they each of them have the face for radio. Um, <laughs> no no, it's it, but it's one of those things where. Um, I always found it so infuriating that like there are all these wonderfully talented, intelligent artists and performers that are out there yet because of what they look and sound like you take away any sort of depth that they're bringing to a part. And it's so, it's just, it's so one note and it's so, um, to be frank, it's just boring. It's boring. We see the same things over and over again. Um, and I got told like, Oh yeah, I wouldn't ever get certain roles because I'm an Indian person. And I was like, well, that's not, uh, that's not right. That's not, that's not fair. It's not true. I grew up with people who were so multifaceted and so complicated and interesting that I was like, well, why am I not seeing this anywhere? And then, um, so because of that, um, I think I was (laughs) also in like a bit of a depression and so I wasn't sleeping and, um, was struggling with that. And because being a creative person is all I've ever known and it's all, it, it, it drives a lot of like what I do in like a day to day basis. And, um, I wasn't sleeping. And so I was like, well, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to like, just like use this and like start creating stuff. And so when you spoke about insomnia, insomnia, part of it was that I literally couldn't sleep. And so I was struggling with that very thing. And, um, as I would, 
have these sort of issues and like be creating late at night and thinking about ideas that I could do. My friends were kind of just like, well, you talk about this a lot. Why don't you just go do it? So I had people in my life that were just like, shut up, stop complaining, go, go do something if you really, really see an issue. And, um, so that's what I did. And so I developed this idea about this insomniac. I knew I wanted him, um, to be similar to me in some aspects, but then very different in other aspects. I knew, um, that I wanted him to be queer. I knew that, uh, cause that's, I am a part of that community and I wanted that to be represented in something that's not really represented in Hollywood right now. Um, and I wanted him to be messy. That's all I knew. I knew that I wanted it to be this like complicated mess of a human being that like has his strengths, knows what he's, knows what he's good at, but is also like going through a lot. Um, because that's what human beings, that's what, that's what it means, um, to be just <laughs> human. So developed this idea with a bunch of friends in like Brooklyn basements, literally like would buy people pizza instead of paying them like pizza and beer. I'd be like, can we just like read through these like drafts of scripts and then kind of kept developing it. And then, um, the series blossomed when, uh, <laughs> I got asked to be an escort. And so, um, when which, I, which was a real thing, that a real happened. thing that happened. Uh -huh. And just yeah. for context in insomnia, the web series, it's about a queer Indian American escort mm -hmm. in New York city. So some things like Vishal, some things very much not like Vishal, yeah. but the escorting idea came from a real experience you had where someone approached you about that. Somebody approached me to bar about it. And, um, I thought it was like people just making a joke. I thought my friends were just being, um, jerks and like, I was just like trying to, <laughs> just trying to buy a beer. And, uh, yeah. And, and when I sort of just said, no, I'm good to this, this human being, um, he sort of made this microaggression at me and just said, yeah, you're right. Indian people. Yeah. You don't do that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, that's it. That's the show. <laughs> that's exactly what I need to be. That's, that's exactly. So like I left the bar and like outlined the entire pilot on my iPhone. Oh, that's great. That little draft is still on my like note. It will never leave that <laughs> it, like that first draft of like the pilot. Um, it's changed completely, but that's when I started like that little aha moment was like, Oh wait, I'm going to prove this one human being wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I feel now that I'm speaking about this, I think, um, <laughs> I think anger feels a lot of my creativity, just like frustration, which I think a lot happens to a lot of creatives. Like you don't see something there. And, um, it propels you to be like, okay, cool. If no one's going to do it the way that I want to do it or I want to see it, then I'm just going to do it this way. Um, and so that's what propelled it. And I kind of just started, um, asking friends of friends going uh, like on coffee dates with people and being like, Hey, I have this project. I'm working on this thing. I don't know what's going to happen with it, but like, here it is. Read it. Let me know what you think. Would you want to be involved? David was lovely enough to, to be one of those people that was, you know, very early on, you know, saw some, something in it and said, I actually want to help you and connect you with people. And, um, was just so instrumental in that aspect of, um, and also just being, David was like my angel, my little like guardian angel. Like he would text me when I Mine knew, too, yeah. right. <laughs> he would text me, he would somehow know and still does like still knows like he'll text me. Hey, are you good? And like, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm really not. <laughs> like I'm, 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 I'm going through it right now. So thank you for this. Um, and it just kind of like went from there. Like we just kind of built this little community from just, just shamelessly asking for favors and asking friends of friends. And I just got introduced to my crew through people. And, um, and then we shot it, we raised a bunch of money, we kickstarted and then got in, got some investors and, um, shot it for about like, I would say like 55,000, I think. Um, and then shot it last November. So November, 2018, 18, 18, 20, yeah, yeah, 20, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, time, is that right? Yeah. I was like, is that, is that correct? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, November 2018, and then it was out by June of 2019. Um, so busy, 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 busy year. So being in Brooklyn, I've I've heard about one or two web series being developed uh, out sure. of the community, mm -hmm. but it's um, a rare like indie thing that's up and coming. Yeah. yeah um, so you know, always going. I, I hear ideas thrown out all the time. Yours was just such. Um, unusually successful, I would say. Mm. And uh, from the early stage to the late stage, right? You know, the Kickstarter did tremendously well. It was received really well um, online. Like, what do you attribute that success to for the creatives out there looking to do something similar? Like, what were any, I know there's so many small things yeah. and so many people that plug in and, 
and the power of the story and this to plug in the process. But were there any like that's some, something that stood out that that uh, made your success stand out in this I kind think of like, two crowded, things crowded for, experience? Yeah, no, I think two things. I think one, it was the the this like tribe of creatives that we assembled of like all different walks of life, like. Um, I had like I had David there and then I had like two of my investing partners or two of my really good friends from college that we like were on an Indian dance team together and like they wanted they like saw potential in it and then um my deep my director of photography was like somebody that I knew through my old roommate and like and even my associate producer and they sort of introduced me to my director who um she was Michelle Catullo is like this wonderful up and coming indie director who then introduced me to like uh, more people and like more people and it was just this like collaborative little group that I just think that like it will still be a mystery to me if I'm able to ever work on a set like that because like, it was really just a lovely like we we were shooting a lot of material in six days. Like we shot about 65 pages of material in six shooting days. And wow. so if, if you, if you, for people that don't know that it's a ton, like a lot of film sets don't, they do maybe like four or five, like maybe, uh, maybe, um, on major TV shows. Um, and then b- from that, like I just, I pulled like my friends who were actors who like, don't, who are so, so talented and, um, don't get a lot of like, exposure in terms of their gigs and things like that. And I was like, I, I want to like, I want all these good people to like work on this thing. And it was just like, it was just a lot of like community building. And I really, really do believe that it's the only, it's one of the biggest reasons why like we were as successful because people, most of our crew and our cast were people who are minorities and people who are from like, um, you know, I guess quote unquote marginalized communities that are not really represented as much in like media. And so I think people just saw that potential and they saw themselves in these characters. They saw themselves in the story. They saw that it was different. Um, I know a lot of people in the South Asian community have been really, really lovely. Thank God. I was so worried about it. Um, and even the queer the LGBTQ community um, have received it really, really well just because um, it's not necessarily like a new concept, like to have someone play an escort. Um, but what we've done with it in terms of like the storytelling and the narration and also just having South Asian people be the focus of the story, um, I think really just resonated with people. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's only really hitting me now that we did it Mm -hmm. like this week. It's really hitting me that like, Oh no, we like did something like that, which is really, really wild to think about. Cause I just, you hadn't as, as the person who, cause it was also my first time at at like the helm of it. So Mm -hmm. every decision went to me, Mm-hmm. Every single decision that we made, people were like, what do you think about this and that and that? And it's just kind of like, you don't have time to think. And I was acting on set and I'm doing, I'm like doing writing notes on set. Um, we'll also just trying to make sure that people are having fun and enjoying, you know, this 12 hour day that's going to be exhausting. And mm-hmm. um, so I think it was really just that community. And then I also think that um, for whatever reason, we're living in this really cool time of um, just like content creation where I think people really take stock and value in somebody putting themselves out there in that way, because it takes a lot of work to create stuff from the get go. Um, Especially if you want to do something of quality, Um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And I think people even who aren't content creators acknowledge that and see like the work that's being put into it in terms of marketing, in terms of, um, assembling everything and, uh, you know, making sure that it's going to the right people and, um, making sure that the right people on that are on board. And just like, you know, I think people really do see the value in that. Um, Mm -hmm. and think it's cool. I think people forget that art really is healing. It's very, very, um, it's challenging. It's fun. Um, but it is work. And I think people outside of the, you know, outside of my like, you know, artistic community, they see it. And so they want to, you know, reward that, which is really cool. It was such a, a new project, something that a lot of people haven't done before, haven't seen before. Um, I'm curious, do you feel like you could do it again? Oh yeah. Um, with, with going through the process. So, I mean, like, obviously you learned a lot, right. Mm -hmm. And you learned so much on the job, but it's like, Hey, we had like whatever percent, chance of success on this mm-hmm. one. Do you feel like the next one is like, all right, we've got all this stuff in place. We can do a totally different idea, but we have like 
you know, the team, we have the process, we have like a lot of that figured out. Yes. I mean, obviously there's a lot we would do differently. Like you sure. learn so, so much like little, you know, things here and there you, you want to change, but, um, yeah, I think the uncertainty, like there's always going to be uncertainty, but like the, the, the feeling of not knowing what I was doing isn't as present this time around. Like I at least have like, it's like when you're trying to walk, like when you like take those first steps, you're like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I like kind of understand what's happening with my body right now. With this project, it was like me like slowly getting up to like walk as if I was a toddler. Now like my legs are fully developed and I'm able to walk. Now it's like finessing it. It's now it's like, okay, how do we jog? That's like what it is. That's right. how it feels. So I think with with that being said, I definitely, we, we can do it again. I think we are going to do it again. Um, we're in the process of thinking about those things. So, um, get ready, David, <laughs> if you're around, you heard it uh, here. <laughs> this is, this is the worst hard pitch I've ever, I've ever heard live on the mic. You heard it here. Readers, readers, who's reading this Ooh, listeners. Um, yeah, no, I, mean, we, I want to, I do, but I think now that all of that is in place, um, we want to elevate it. We want the product to be even more polished. We want, um, like we were lucky that we were able to pay everybody, but I want everyone to be paid more. I want, uh, more perks of like working on a set of, um, of mine. And it's just leveling, it's leveling up that way, you know, just making it bigger, better, but still focusing on like the storytelling. Um, but yeah, we, I want to do it again, but my hope is that we get, you know, the goal is to get it like, you know, a, a studio or a network to, you know, pick up these projects and to then, you know, give you a lot of the resources and um, give you a room of writers and producers and a crew that's, you know, really, really wonderful and um, collaborate with in that way. So that's that's sure. the ultimate goal. And I imagine having a successful project like this, at least those conversations have gotten started. Yes. Um, which is. Yeah. Great, yeah. Right? Which I'm even I'm even like. I'm even lucky that anyone's entertaining that because there's so many, there are so many people creating content out there. There's so many like web series. There are so many, um, there's, there's so many creative endeavors happening that just don't see the light of day. Um, and a lot of them are just like tests, you know, they're like test runs to see what would happen in like the long run. But you, I think people are sort of, enamored with this idea of like the self creator right now. And that like, we we've seen what, um, you know, Alana and Abby from broad city can do. We can see what high maintenance, like the people, the creators there, uh, Katya and Ben, um, you see what Issa Rae has done, you know, all of these people who started out just putting out online content and now they're on major networks, uh -huh. you know, and they're creating content that really is changing sort of the landscape of like how we think and the like cultural significance, um, and that's, that's, that's awesome. That's, and you just hoped you can create more. And, um, that's, 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 that's the hope is just to create good, you know, stories. We talked a little bit earlier about, or you talked a little bit earlier. I don't want to take credit for this about creating the things that you want to see, mm. telling the stories that you want to hear and you want to watch. And a lot of that is just through grit and elbow grease. And this is something that, you know, I had a kind of a courtside seat to over the course of insomnia's development, watching you go through this. There are occasionally some opportunities and some call them corporate partners or institutional partners that will help you level up, that may take mm -hmm. a chance on you and, and can be a little bit, or it can feel like they're a little bit altruistic, although they all, they also have their motives and their mm -hmm. own kind of self-promotional mm -hmm. ends. Uh, but one of those for you was the Tribeca creators program, which were you, you were accepted to and involved with in 2019. And that kind of focuses around new and up and coming creators through the auspices of the Tribeca film festival. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, that program and your experiences in it? And are there other similar institutions or programs that you might want to be involved with in the next iteration of this web series or in future ones? Yeah. Um, I was, the, I was lucky enough to be a part of that program. Um, the Tribeca creator now program, um, and it stands for new online work. Um, the last couple of years, they, um, in sort of this renaissance of like digital content sort of being, key and very paramount in like moving the industry forward. Um, major film festivals, you know, Tribeca, Sundance, Toronto, um, they, they've all, even like the New York Film Festival, um, 
they have these programs for like new online creators um, that are up and coming and uh, they allow you to submit work and submit content and um, which is really, really lovely because you get to you get to um, sort of play with like people that are in like the big leagues, you know, that are, you know, in these big festivals and sort of like interface and network with like people who are decision makers, which is really, really cool. And um, yeah, they, they, I was one of like 18 people this year that they chose to, um, to bring on. And I kind of got access to the festival, which was really, really cool. And um, the biggest thing was that we got to meet with, um, we got to, send a pitch of different concepts. Um, Insomnia was one of them, but I got to, I got to pitch about eight other projects that, you know, um, they might've been interested in. And, um, we got about like 10 different meetings with different studios and networks and content creators. And so we just kind of got to, we spent a day getting to know these like people and, uh, got to meet them and, um, I met a lot of executives from like major networks and, um, a lot of people from Tribeca who, you know, are very well connected and then also just meet other creators. Like we got to meet other people that are creating content and that like have this really cool moment in their lives. And like, I was talking to a bunch of people and they're like, yeah, we literally have to go work at our bar, uh, two days where like one guy was like, yeah, I'm about to go work at concierge desk in LA. Like, and I'm going to be writing when I'm like supposed to do my job. Like all these people are just, they're hustling to like get content out there. And, um, just being able to like be in that space was really, really fascinating and um, made a lot of good like friends and connections out of it too. I, I am curious, what is the depth uh, of these other pitches? Because obviously <laughs> Insomnia, if you go online and you look up Insomnia, the show on YouTube or on social media, you can see a very well-crafted six episode mm-hmm. season one with a narrative arc and great acting. And uh, I hear one of the producers is very attractive. That's, that's a joke um, because I'm one of the producers. But all that to say, that was a very in-depth pitch. Mm. How deep were you going in these meetings with the eight other pitches? And, and oh. what does that look like? Are they one-pagers or are they... Yeah, they're all one-pagers. Um, I mean, in theory, we probably I probably had eight other ideas there, but like I would say maybe three to four continued to be like ones that we talked about. Um, and so those are the ones that we focused on. Um, I because insomnia was the focus that was always going to be like the push. Cause it is like, we are, we are giving you a finished product. Um, and at that point actually it wasn't done. Like I think at that point we were, we were giving like, it was still like, in it's like last st- stages of post production. So, um, I was pretty in depth on a lot of them though. Like, and that's the other thing about these like meetings is that if, if they have a question, you make it up. Like some people were asking me some like really in-depth questions about like narrative and like how far I see this stuff. And I literally was like, I have no idea, but I'm just going to make this up on the spot because guess what? It's coming from my brain. So like there's no right or wrong, right. you know? So that was a luxury to have, um, on that, but that's just life, right? Just, you don't have an answer. You, uh, say, uh, well, you're like, this is up. This one's about a queer Indian American escort, but with ghosts. And you just add, you just add different layers to that. I, okay. So, you know, I, I, Halloween's like my favorite time of year. So like the thought of ghosts and like, I want to do like a ghost. That's one on my list that I haven't even started writing, but I do want to do like a haunted house film at some point in my life. Um, or like a horror movie. I want to write one, but I don't know what I, I don't know where I'd even start. Um, but with all my work, the, the sort of cohesive thing that binds all my work together is that they are all focused on like Indian people. They're all about South Asian characters. That's all that, that will be the only work that I produce just because that's what I, that's my lived in experience and I want to see more of it. Um, and they sort of, and it was cool cause I, uh, I like all sorts of, um, genres and I, 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 as I'm starting to create my own stuff, I am realizing that, um, I still sort of like a snarkily, a snarkily dark sensibility in any sort of project that I'm working on. Um, and so that's something that I've realized that you're going to see and th- that will be something that's like signature to like what I want to be doing. Um, but I was, I was talking about a, I'm writing a dramedy that's about like a first generation Indian American family in Jackson Heights, Queens in like the 1970s. That's like very different from insomnia. It's very much, um, it's a little more like family oriented. It's a little more like wonder years, freaks and geeks kind of vibe. Um, and then I'm writing one about a 
Like it's a total Wolf of Wall Street, like dark, dark comedy, fully R rated. Like just like a, it's a true story about a guy who's like in prison right now. Um, and then I'm also developing um, another piece that's like a full on musical. So I just it allowed me to showcase a lot of the things that I have in that I want to be producing and that I want to be creating. Am I going to be writing all of them by myself? Absolutely not. Am I going to be doing this all by myself? Absolutely not. But being in that creator's market and talking to other people and hearing what they're also doing was such a, a reminder that I can do all of this and that I don't need to be focusing on just one thing. Um, and I feel like the minute that you focus on one, at least for me, when I was just focusing on acting, it's all that I thought about. And it, it, and when things aren't going the way that you'd like them to go, it will be, it will crush your soul because like you're just sitting there waiting and that's not how that works. Like you need to be able to multitask and do other things. And so it was such a reminder that like, I'm not the only one doing it. Like people are, people are so much more talented than me and they're constantly juggling all these different projects. And so that for, for what, for what that creator market was, it was, if anything, it was such a lovely a reminder that like other people are just really doing the work and that's what matters. Excellent. Vishal Reddy, where can folks keep up to date with what you're doing and the work you're putting out? Um, you can check me out on uh, vishalreddy.com. Um, also check out insomnia, insomnia, the show.com um, and uh, Instagram. Ready to rumble. That's my Instagram handle. And just, it's R-E-D-D-Y. Mm-hmm. Two. Two Ds. No, two, like the number already two. But two, two D- oh, ready, yeah, yeah. R-E-D-D-Y, the numeral two, and then rumble. Mm-hmm. Spelled just like everyone spells rumble. Can you put it in the bio or the link? Oh, yeah, 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 we'll put, yeah, we yeah. Can put we'll put Very it in the show rare. description. Great. I don't want to, <laughs> you can find it in the bio. <laughs> <laughs> this is my show go, now. Go, go to the show notes, folks. Yeah, yeah. All right, Michelle, thanks so much for joining thanks us so today. Thanks so much. 